Hello and welcome to this TDD tutorial, and welcome to the fourth section of this course. Since in previous sections you've seen how to develop simple code with test-driven development, and in the next few sections we are going to focus on a little bit more complicated cases and see what are the things we should pay attention to. To sum it up, in this section we will check what are the best practices for writing testable code and talk about one of them in details, single responsibility principle. So let's jump right into it and start the first video in this section. As mentioned, we will discuss what are the best practices when it comes to writing a testable code and we will dive deeper into single responsibility principle. In general, when it comes to writing a testable code, we need to pay attention to some stuff. Using TDD is naturally guiding us to use these best practices, but sometimes you could get stuck because we didn't pay attention to other things and take them into consideration. For our code to be highly testable, it needs to be loosely coupled. This means the different level of abstractions shouldn't depend on each other. This is solved by following solid principles, which are called dependency injection and inversion of control. Also, our code needs to be independent from data. Another thing we should follow is object-oriented design. I already mentioned solid principles, which are the backbone of object-oriented design, but there are other things like GRASP, which is acronym for general responsibility, assignment software patterns, and so on. And finally, one of the most important concepts to follow is single responsibility principle. Let's talk a bit more about it. How many times have you tried writing something like this? Well, not the real knife, but something simple, class that should do one thing, it had one purpose, and you ended up with something like this. You started with a simple class and you ended up with one huge class with a lot of functionalities. I know that I've done this a bunch of times. And from testing point of view, this is a nightmare. Also, you will probably end up with wrong abstractions and highly coupled code if you do things this way. This is why we should use single responsibility principle. It was defined by Robert C. Martin, also known as Uncle Bob. This principle states that each software module should have one and only one reason to change. What does this mean though? Effectively, this means that every class should have one responsibility, meaning one functionality. This way we are separating concerns of our software into neat boxes. Single responsibility principle is the first of solid principles that we will talk more about during this course. This principle is actually S in solid. Apart from that, this principle is helping us by letting us always know what are the things we are testing. Now, let's run through two examples. Both of these examples will implement the same thing. They will read some data from the database based on the information from the database it will process the data and finally it will write the data back into the database. It's pretty straightforward and standard workflow, something we do each day basically. Read the data, modify it and update it in the DB. First implementation will not follow single responsibility principle. We will see how that code looks like. And the second one will follow this principle and uh, we will see how easy it is to test this kind of code. It will actually be developed using TDD, so that's why it will be so clean. So let's go right into it. Okay, take a look at this class. This is the first implementation, the one that is not following single responsibility principle. This SQL entity data handler has one method which is called read process update just by this name you should know that this method is not following single responsibility principle because apparently it has many functionalities in it and indeed have a look here it first takes connection string from the application configuration then it opens the sql connection here and then it is reading the data storing it in here and then it uses this kind of switch case to process this data. After that, it's updating the data in the database by using this update command. As you can see, it is just like that ultimate Swiss knight 
this method is in charge of everything. It has multiple functionalities. And evidently this class was not developed using TDD. It would also be very hard to test this method because there are a lot of things that this class is doing. Not to mention that there are many side effects that it is creating. Now let's take a look at the same problem developed using test-driven development and with respecting single responsibility principle. Take a look here at my left. If we do the things this way and follow this principle, we will end up with a lot of classes. And here they are. But what we are doing here is actually we are giving a specific functionality to each of these classes. For example, take a look at the entity. It has type and a value, so it apparently holds the data, and it knows how to create a new value based on that data. The value that will be eventually write down into the database. So based on this, it knows how to calculate a new value. Then take a look at this command factory. It has two methods, one is for creating a select method and the other one for creating an update method. Also, we are having an SQL connection wrapper, which is used so we can easily mock our data and so we can easily handle this SQL connection. And finally, there is SQL data handler, which has two functions, read entities and update data fields in entity. Basically, these methods are used to organize all these previous classes. So you can see that read entity is using command factory to create a select command. It is using entity to store the data here. And it is using, and later it is using this function of entity to update it in the database. So what we have done, we separated concern of every class. And as you can see, this way of implementation has a lot of 10 tests here. And if we run them, they will all pass. And our code is basically tested. It is neatly organized and it is neatly organized. More information about single responsibility principle you can find on my blog on this link here, where I'm not only explaining single responsibility principle from the object oriented point of view, but I also cover functional programming and microservices. This video we saw what all does it take to write testable code. Also we examined single responsibility principle.